What is up, my fellow members of the CLC? Spider-Man Far From Home follows the further adventures of Peter Parker after the major events of Avengers Infinity War and Avengers Endgame. Peter Parker's just trying to go on a European vacation with his classmates, trying to hook up with MJ, played by Zendaya, but per usual... Things are never that simple, and Peter's summer vacation is hijacked by Nick Fury, and of adventure and hilarity ensues. Really looking forward to this movie. Uh, it's Spider-Man. I love Spider-Man. I love this version of Spider-Man, and I was really excited to see where the MCU was going to go after the events of Avengers Endgame. And I'm happy to say that Spider-Man Far From Home delivers. I really enjoyed this movie a bunch. I, I don't know if I liked it as much as Spider-Man Homecoming. They're about neck and neck at this point, but this is another fun Marvel adventure with an incredibly high rewatchability factor. I'm going to revisit this film multiple times over the next several years for sure. A lot of good things about this movie, but I'll start with the obvious. Tom Holland is a perfect Spider-Man. I, I mean, I'm very partial towards the Tobey Maguire version, just because those movies, like, were my childhood, but I fully acknowledge that Tom Holland is the best live-action version of Spider-Man. He's the right age, he's got the right look, he's, he's just great. I don't think I like Zendaya as much as some other people do, but she's fine. She does she does a good job. Her and uh, Tom Holland have really good chemistry together. The actor who plays Ned, I should know his name, Jacob Batalon, I think his name is. I like him a lot, and, and that was a character I wasn't sure I was going to like, but I really liked him in Homecoming. I liked him a lot in this as well. Uh, the, the rest of the cast, really good. Samuel L. Jackson never turns in a bad performance, so I'm not really going to comment on him. I'll, I will say, uh, John Favreau, is in this movie quite a bit. What's weird to me is no one's really noticed that Jon Favreau has kind of run Hollywood for the last decade plus. I mean, he directed and was in the first two Iron Man movies. Now, he, he had a major part in Iron Man 3. He's kind of had, uh, you know, been a consistent part of this MCU. He had one of the more emotional moments in Avengers Endgame. He's directed some big movies like The Jungle Book, and he's got this small little independent movie coming out in a few weeks called The Lion King, which I think is probably going to do pretty well, uh, and he's really good in this. I always like seeing John Favreau in movies. I, I just, I think he's really likable. I think he can be funny. He can be dramatic, and I think he's he's a lot of fun to watch in this. He's not in it a ton, but I always enjoy seeing him. Another guy I really enjoy seeing, and I was really excited to see in this movie is Jake Gyllenhaal. When I heard Jake Gyllenhaal was going to be in a Marvel movie, I was amped. Now, I think Jake Gyllenhaal is one of the most underappreciated actors in Hollywood. Like, I, I think he's one of those guys who's kind of been put into this box of the the Hollywood pretty boy when in reality this is somebody who kind of ditched that persona a long time ago and has chosen to take on projects that have really allowed him to show his acting prowess I mean whether it be Brothers or Prisoners or Southpaw or, or Nightcrawler which he's amazing in this is a guy who d d is is a chameleon I hold him on par with somebody like DiCaprio I think he's that good and so I was amped to see him in this movie, and I really hope they were going to do Mysterio right and, and make him an interesting layered character, and I'm really happy to say they did. Mysterio was arguably my favorite part of this movie, and I think a big part of that is the fact that Jillian Hall just has that natural charisma, but also I think the storytelling and the writing with that character is so clever, and without giving too much away, I'm just going to say that as somebody who's been following these movies since I was 12 years old, right, it's been a part of the Marvel Cinematic Universe since the very beginning, it is so rewarding as a fan to see just how much Marvel has thought out this entire process. And it's it's so clever and brilliant to see how much all these different storylines from all these different films have been able to kind of be intertwined. And, and that's all I'm going to say without giving too much away. But I thought what they do with Mysterio is incredibly clever. And uh, I, Jake Gyllenhaal is awesome. Visually, the movie looks awesome. You know, all these Marvel movies do for the most part. But I thought... Uh, there was some stuff in here uh, with Mysterio, and once again, not trying to give anything away, but that reminded me of uh, a, a lesser MCU movie, but one that had some of the best visuals, and that's Doctor Strange. I, I think that there's some moments in here that kind of took me back to that. Uh, visually, the movie looks awesome. The effects are great, which is, is no surprise, but still a major plus. Um, I'm really raving about the movie. It's not perfect. I think the humor in this one is does not hit as much as Spider-Man Homecoming did, and especially not as much as the last couple Avengers movies did. Uh, Marcus and McFeely were the two writers on the last two Avengers movies, and they did such, and they might have been for all of the Russo Brothers MCU movies. I'll have to double check on that. I should know that. But it, they, they did such a great job of, you know, intertwining the humor 
without having it seem out of place. And they would have all these little character moments that if they didn't make you laugh out loud, which they often did, they would at least make you smile. And there aren't as many in this movie. Now, they try a lot. And there's nothing, there's only one moment, and it's near the end, that really made me go, uh-huh. So there's no, there's no horrible jokes. I just didn't find myself laughing as consistently as I think the movie wanted me to. And a lot of that falls in the first half. I think the first half is almost exclusively Peter and his friends. And that's not the most interesting part of the movie. The second half, the movie just gets exponentially more interesting. And that's where you kind of get into Mysterio and his backstory. And it becomes much more engaging. And I think, and probably about two-thirds of the way in, I'm like, man... I, I forgive whatever problems I might have. I am absolutely worshiping this movie, but I will say I, the last third of this film, the final action sequence, I found myself getting a little bit bored. And I think Marvel, in a sense, is a victim of their own success in that aspect because we've seen in the last few Avengers movies, especially Endgame, these epic amazing battles. I, I brought it up when I talked about it on here. The final action sequence in Avengers Endgame is one of the most amazing things I've ever seen in my entire life. And you, you build up, you have all these amazing set pieces that when you get to another film and they're trying to kind of top themselves every time, it just falls a little bit flat because you kind of get the, the feeling of, okay, well, we've seen this before similar, you know, in a similar way. And we've also seen it done a bit better. It's good, but it did knock down the movie uh, just a, a, a notch or two, just a little bit for me. Once again, no spoilers here, I promise. But there are two uh, credit sequences here, one in, one in the middle of the credits, one after the credits. Both of these credit sequences have major consequences. Like, you definitely need to stay around and watch them, and I give them credit for that. But the second one, I was like, eh, okay. It's whatever. I, I Once again, no spoilers, but I'll just say that I, I'm not really a big fan of those characters, so it didn't really do much for me. And it, it, to a certain extent, diminished some of the effects that the movie had, had had up to that point. But the, the credit sequence in the middle, I almost stood up and applauded. I was so, I was grinning from ear to ear when I saw it. I started, I, I, I clapped. I was so excited when I saw what I saw in that mid, uh, credit sequence. And if you, if you're someone who's been a fan of these films, uh, for years, you are just, you're going to be just in love with that mid credit action sequence. And I think they do a tremendous job. All these Marvel movies, I think with the exception of some of the earlier sequels, like Iron Man two, and even age of Ultron to a certain extent recently, They've done a great job of not allowing the world building to get in the way of storytelling. Uh, I think this movie, they use the credit sequences to set up future films and get you excited for future films without sacrificing the the story of the movie that we just watched. I never felt like, oh, they're, they're trying to set up for more stuff. No, this felt like a new beginning. And I've wondered, I've even asked myself as somebody who's a diehard fan of these movies, now that we've been through the Infinity Saga, we've been through Thanos, we've seen these epic battles and major consequences and seismic events, we've seen half the universe be snapped out of existence. Now that all that's gone down, Am I going to care as much? And after seeing this movie, to me, the answer is absolutely yes. Uh, these are stories that do need to be told and stories that I desperately want to see. And Marvel, they just keep on chugging. This isn't a perfect movie. If I had to give it a rating, I'm close. I'd probably give it an eight and a half trending upward right now. I'm sure if I saw it again, I might like it more. Like I said, it's very rewatchable. I'm sure I'm going to see it. If not in theaters again, I'm going to be watching it multiple times when it comes out on, uh, you know, on, on Blu-ray. So I... Eight and a half is a very good rating, and it's amazing to me that what this is what Marvel's 10th best movie, maybe, and they make this so effortless. Like, it takes a lot to make a movie that I give this high of a rating to, but I, I think we kind of take it for granted how consistent and how good Marvel has been, as, and as much as I didn't really care for a movie like Captain Marvel— that, that stood out so much because we've had so much consistent goodness over this last decade plus. So, 8.5 uh, out of 10 for Spider-Man Far From Home. It, go see it. I, absolutely go see it. See it in, with a crowd. See it in theaters. It's a ton of fun to watch, and it's a crowd pleaser. How can you not love Spider-Man? Okay. So, you can follow me on Twitter. That's at Castellani2014. The link is in the description for this video. Please uh, give me a thumbs up. Subscribe. To this channel. I'd like to get some more subscribers on here. I work hard on these videos. I should post more often than I do. I'll try. If I get some more subscribers, maybe I will. All right. I think that's all I got for now. I love you guys to death. 
Peace and happiness. Never stop losing.